November 19th, 2023. Going to be your host, Dana Durnford. And uh, this is the Nuclear Scumbag Show. Just going to jump right in to the news as soon as we jump through this. So there's not a nuclear scientist on the entire planet that looked at Fukushima Reactor 3 and 4 didn't know that it was 100% meltdown. There's not a single academic in the nuclear industry on the entire planet that looked at this original footage and didn't say the fuel pools in the reactor cores were gone. There's not one professor, period. There's not one nuclear expert, period, would have said to themselves, you know, and beyond closed doors, it's all gone. And certainly, two years later, when they stripped and left the two stumps of Reactor 3 and 4, there's not a nuclear academic in any university, in any business in the nuclear industry that didn't nuclear power plant. There's not a single person that was in the know that would have said that the fuel pools in the reactor cores are there. Doomsday-like ra radiation releases from the fire unit 4. Unit 4 is completely gone. And they left them stumps there to manipulate you. And Unit 1, there was four reactors. I just showed you Reactor 3 and 4. Reactor 4, this is, they built it off site and then brought it in. This was the cage that went around the remainder of Reactor 1. And they put a Kevlar sarcophagus around it. And there wasn't a nuclear academic that it, the engineers they would have said no the building is fuel pools are gone reactor cores are gone and the nrc came out and said unit one explosion generating missiles and this was unit one so you can see there's four top there's four stories to that part there there's the first one and i screwed it up today so that part right there is that part up there. These are 190 foot buildings, right? So there's huge buildings. And just that piece there is taller than reactor three and four stone stacked on top of each other. Now they're not hiding that because they're bored. They're doing that because it has caused a catastrophic event on this planet, a chain reaction of extinction for the species. And it trickles all the way up to the humans. But in the humans, it becomes very visible. Uh, you start seeing this explosion of uh, diabetes, and in children, you start seeing an explosion of autism and Down syndrome. And in the elderly, you start seeing Alzheimer's and dementia exploding. So here's just uh, CNN, ABC Australia, BBC United Kingdom, CBS United States. These are all the biggest medias all pretending they're in the fuel pool way, way above the remains of a building. The fuel pools are at the very top of the buildings. And this was a mixed oxide reactor three. This is the most dangerous building on the entire planet. And we lost the entire inventories. And there was four uh, decades of reactor cores stored at the top of the buildings. That's all gone too. And July the 23rd, July 13th, South Korean professor at the Department of Nuclear and Quantum Engineering said that the meltdowns were equal to three grams of sugar being thrown into the ocean. The reality of it is, though, that each of these buildings is worse than all nuclear meltdowns in history combined, each of the buildings. So they built these contraptions on top of it, so on top of these stumps, you know, in reactor one and three, you can see the explosions. You know they're gone, see? But the average person doesn't. And so then they pretended they were in the building, everything was okay. And it was just... The structures that they built don't physically touch the buildings, the stumps, the stumps. These stumps normally would have been razed right to the ground. The radioactive plume covered the entire planet. This model is 20 days. And it counts from there up to the one month. 
of radio of radioactive fallout. Now, it never stopped falling out. They rolled out all kinds of an apologist, and these are experts who said the fuel pools were still intact and it was like a crushed pack of cigarettes. The fallout covered the entire planet in about 20 to 30 days. All the studies agree upon that. And just to give you some kind of context, in 2019, they picked up 30 million one-ton bags, and they were storing 30 million one-ton bags at 105,000 sites like that there. And that so Korea said they're going to develop a tritium. So that the main narrative now is nothing got out on a tritium, and that's going to be a controlled release. These are, and this was perpetrated by the International Atomic Energy Agency is when they cooked this up. And so what they're claiming is that the releases from multiple reactors melting down is equal to a a few flakes, 1.3 grams of salt, for instance, divided by 22, and one of those out of 22 is what they're saying will get out of the site each year. But the reality of it was, they lost the entire inventories, and they covered it up. Physically and literally, they covered it all up. And all the journalists reveled in manipulating you and destroying your ability to have a future, because that's what they're doing. They're, just, they're destroying your ability to have a future. <clears throat> okay, so we had a, a poll on Thursday's show. That's not it, my apologies. We had a poll on Thursday's show. Should New Scale, which... Uh, it's basically funded by the Department of Energy, be banned and prosecuted after faking small modular reactor scams. Now, they're now because they just announced last week that uh, they're not going to build a small modular reactors like they were claiming they were going to build, but they took all that money and they didn't give anything back. And that's what it was all about from the very beginning. Now that video, when I was halfway through the video, I had 10 views, 10, 10 views on a subject that I've been doing a show on for over a decade, regular shows, five, typically five days a week, but uh, I have a, a lot of medical issues just last, well this year, right, and particularly the last number of weeks, but generally we do it five days a week. I'm actually going to be heading out on a research expedition in the forest about 100 kilometers away from here, and I'll be gone for all day. We're going to go look for before the snow shows up for any kind of species, and there's around 100 ponds. We're going to be looking for birds in those ponds. And so halfway through my show, I've seen something that they, they're 100% censoring the daylight center, right? Ten, 10 views halfway through my show. At the end of the show, two hours later, I had 25 views. 25 views, I had, but I also had 25 thumbs up, and I had 30 votes. But 25 views is um, just a, a censorship I've never seen before. Last night, I posted a 40-minute uh, video on Israel and Palestine. And so I had eight thumbs up. Um, I had eight votes in the poll. And at the end of the show, I only had four views. They'd done the same thing to me where they just didn't let me get any views. Like, people are watching the video, but it's not registering. That's, they'd done that on Thursday, now they've done it again on Sunday. They'll probably do it again tonight. Because there's nobody else here to tell you the story of Fukushima before he went to documentation on the entire planet. There, there's nobody. I ran into the ground trying to have a conversation for over a decade, plus the field studies that I've done. But that's pretty shocking, and that's pretty desperate. 
And that video on Israel last night, this is an ex-Israeli soldier up there who's talking with the people in Israel on on the day that the Hamas allegedly crossed the border and said that this is obviously deep state, a uh, false flag event. This was, they allowed the slaughter to happen. And then the, cen the censorship Thursday and last night is extraordinary. And then I got no, I, you know, YouTube only let me stay there so they, can con they figure they can kind of control me, right? I won't go somewhere else and build up an audience. And they got no one else to pick on. You got a thousand public relations firms trying to curb stomp me every day for 12 years. To the point now where they literally just says, we don't care, we're just going to give them four views. So nobody will watch the video, right? And they do the same thing with the nuclear videos as of Thursday. They completely just disappeared me from the algorithms. You know, when I was on a research expedition two years ago looking for spiders, they took down my site with 1,600 presentations on it. A decade of research expeditions on it. Just burnt all those books. No explanations, no strikes on my account. No way to appeal it. Because they got nobody else to pick on. And they're so hateful. They're, they're so... They're, they're, they're so used to their the whole legacy, their whole family, their whole history is predicated upon hate and contempt for their paychecks. And the current generation of these little inbreeds are disconnected from any kind of concept of a future. They don't understand that for a paycheck, they're destroying the entire planet's future so they can get their paycheck. The ultimate, the ultimate in contempt for humanity and themselves and their loved ones. Sweden plans a massive expansion of nuclear energy. Sweden. Well, they got no one to build it. EDF ain't going to be building it. South Korea is not going to be building it. Russia is not going to be building it. They can't build what they got on the plate right now. They don't have. They don't even have a supply network. The Swedish government unveiled the roadmap that envisioned the construction of new nuclear generating capacity equivalent to at least two large scale reactors. So that's a massive expansion. And World Nuclear News is probably the same people that are censoring me. That's a lobbying group. D these people don't have a vision. <laughs> they just got a big paycheck to do this. They're not proud of it. They don't got their soul into it. They don't have convictions about it. It's just an easy way to get reelected or an easy way to get a bunch of stocks that can't be traced and, and a big payoff down the road, if not right away. Energy policy goal changed from 100% renewables to 100% fossil free. Well, every nuclear power plant uh, needs two gas, oil, and coal plants, those big ones, dedicated to it to build it, to run it for its legacy, its, exp its history, and then for a 100-year legacy to decommission the sites. It needs two gas, oil, and coal plants. And that the whole site, the material used on the site, is the most resource-intensive material on the entire planet. Everything is triple inspected. Why safe nuclear transport is key to net zero. Now, net zero was a paper written by Miles Allen. I got him a cushy job at Oxford. And then the United Nations grabbed that study and then used that to bludgeon you. Right? So we had... Carbon carbon footprint, which was BP oil advertisement campaign to blame you for their screw ups. You had um, Wallace Brocker, which is the father of global warming. You had James Hansen, the father of climate change, and you had Miles Allen, the father of net zero. And the United Nations have used, which is the 195 militaries, have been using that to bludgeon you and those who are not aware of how the world really works, into having no, no future and hating their own and everybody else's future. With safe nuclear transport, safe nuclear transport. 
Sources such as wind, solar, and hydropower, excellent alternatives can't combat the climate crisis alone. Well, geothermal could. Geothermal and uh, wind storage, where you would store uh, air storage, you can press air down in the mine shafts instead of stupid batteries. Why would you use batteries when you can do that? And then there's also what they call water batteries, where they dig two big, or they create two big reservoirs and they fill it up with water. And excess energy gets pumped up to the top one. But that would back up the peak hours, say, for geothermal. Geothermal will run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you can do it anywhere on the entire planet. Why wouldn't you use geothermal? Why, why are we not talking about geothermal? And say we can't rely on renewables and battery storage. Of course you can. Why would you talk about batteries when there's so many other storage solutions that are infinitely a million times better why safe nuclear transport is a key to net zero safe safety look at this how to use safety like it's, it's what and you see i show this all the time where they weaponize certain words safety 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 safe safe safety safe safeguard safety safety safe it's an agenda. There's no, these journalists don't have integrity. They, they don't even know what that, they'll have to look up the word if you say integrity to them. And they'll only look at United Nations website, which is a military industrial complex on top of the U.S. and the Philippines signs a landmark nuclear deal. Like, what are you talking about? The Philippines is the ring of fire is worse than Japan for earthquakes, for goodness sakes. They just had an earthquake there a couple of days ago, right? Like a 7.1 that dropped cranes and everything else. I mean, they have spectacular earthquakes there each year. They have spectacular typhoons there that have blown over 235 mile per hour. Winds sustained post Fukushima, of course. The history of Three Mile Island, the United States' worst commercial nuclear accident. The United States, so that's quite the trick they're using with the United States' worst commercial nuclear reactor. Well, the worst nuclear meltdown in the United States was 100% meltdown of Santa Susana. That was covered up. And Santa Susana didn't even have a containment. You heard Chernobyl not having containment? Well, Americans had Santa Susana. And Santa Susana, the radiation vented hot out over San Fernando Valley. So you should never lived in San Fernando Valley, which the city of Los Angeles was busy annexing. What exactly vented remains in contention. We noticed there was a full meltdown. The reality of it was that the experts agreed on a five-year study that it released 460 times the amount of Three Mile Island, which was, Three Mile Island was nasty. Hang on. Three Mile was, was nasty. And he said around 2 million people were exposed to the gas, gas, not radioactive fallout, but gas, and zero health effects were detected, which is simply not true. There's a huge increase of infant mortality. There's a huge increase in pets that got left behind dying of severe cancers, for instance. There was cancer plume models that correlated with the radioactive fallout model from Three Mile Island. But they, they acknowledged two million people. And of course, we have studies where they talk about it was equal to two million people watching colored television for an extra year. But that's not how radiation works. The industry is so out of control. Like, I don't know if it was ever in control. We got an 80-year legacy of propaganda and generation after generation after generation have regurgitated the exact same propaganda. But, I mean, how can you have a future when this industry insists on being just a bunch of scumbags, just a bunch of degenerate monsters? Really? Clean energy technology, Rolls-Royce small modular nuclear solutions. 
Well, first off, Rolls-Royce small modular reactors are half the size of a large reactor. They don't fit into the category of the, the ghost, the non-existent small modular reactors. And in a lot of cases, they're five times the size of what the typical small modular reactor is supposed to be. The, the reactors are based on current technology instead of some new technology. And they're over half the size of a large reactor. And so then the color clean energy technology is so dishonest, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to, uh, well, like, because we, we cover these nuclear news cycles, 24 hour news cycle a lot. And it's, we cover the lies. That's all we're going to cover. We won't cover nothing else than just the lies each day that shows up. And you can't, you can't cover it. There's too many to cover. And so what we do is we come up and challenge a fraction of the propaganda that came out that day. And it's stunning and it's frightening how many people are actually evil and that are journalists and academics and scientists and professors. It's stunning. MAP reveals what would happen if Europe's largest nuclear power plant exploded. <coughs> MAP reveals what would happen if Europe's largest nuclear power plant exploded. I'll show you another map that articulates it even better. They're talking about Zaphophoria. But this is 19 days after Fukushima from the Norwegian Institute of Air Research based on Xenon 133. There's so many different models and isotopes modeled, you can barely wrap your mind around it. But their version is it looks like this. But we know the real version is the whole planet is covered in an invisible plume at about 19.5 days, 468 hours in that particular model. And then they talk about unleashing the stellar radar fusion pioneer raids Google. Tesla and Harvard in limitless, limitless clean energy quest. Well, limited, limitless clean energy would be geothermal. Just drill it, tap into it, flip it on, and walk away. You got a few guys will go in and engineer or uh, grease the joints once in a while. But they just. They're always fifty. The biggest joke in this technology is they're always just fifty years away from it. And they've been at it for over 50 years. They're working on a design from 1904. And that two years ago, they said they had a major breakthrough. They actually had ignition. This was a stunning moment in human history. And so reporters asked them, well, what was the net gain power? So you got as much power back as you were putting into it, which is enough to light up New York City, by the way, just to get fusion. They use the same amount of energy as 10 million people uses, just for a flash, to cause ignition. And so then what energy did they get back from it? They said it was enough to power a 9-volt battery. So first off, you're talking about enough energy to light up New York for, for just a, a millionth of a second. So how do you extrapolate that the excess power you got was the animosity equivalent of a 9-volt battery. How does that actually work? Because you can't actually extrapolate that. Static electricity would produce more power than that because you're talking about around 300, degree, 300 million degrees Fahrenheit temperatures. So last year they came out in 2022 and said they had another stunning, this was Los Alamos National Laboratory, I believe, or Oregon National Laboratory, I can't remember. So they, they reached nuclear fusion. Now, they haven't been able to repeat it since. And so when asked by journalists, how much power did you get over the power you put into it? They said it was enough to boil uh, 36 kettles of water, 36 one liter kettles of water. So the question is, how much water could you boil at 300,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures and then be able to estimate you got enough energy left over to boil another 36 kettles of water? 
See, because both of these mathematical equations are simply can't be true. You can't extrapolate that from an event that we're talking about. So the, the, whole, the whole legacy is predicated upon a straw man's argument in order to hoodwink you into putting investments in that instead of something useful like geothermal. It's an unbelievable, un inconceivable scumbag routine that they do. These, you have to be a scumbag to do what they're doing. And they get a lot of money, right? And they get big wages, and they don't have to come up with any... They don't have to prove anything. They just got to keep the Ponzi scam alive, right? You take the money from the newest investors to pay the older investors. Start off from Germany's Max Planck Institute, John had hosted companies chasing energy transition, Holy Grail. Well, the Holy Grail is geothermal. You drill down, you tap in a thousand degree Fahrenheit temperatures. Just got to develop the right drill bits to make it quicker and easier. And everybody's too busy working on the Holy Grail instead of coming up with solutions that already exist for a, a system that already exists but has been ignored and ostracized from the equation. The one thing that the news cycle shows us day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year after year after year after year, after year that we cover is that the industry is not even but scum. They really are scumbags and they work in a nuclear industry. Seoul National University opens New Scale Power Energy Exploration Center. So this is Nuclear Engineering International, which is a nuclear lobbying group. That's who they are. They're, they're not like a, a, a media. They're a, they're a nuclear lobbying group. Seoul National Laboratory. So Korea is the ones that told you, none got out of Fukushima, only 2.2 grams of tritium, and they're only going to release 0 0.062 grams a year for the next 30 or 40 years, and that everything is hunky-dory and there's nothing to worry about. It was equal to three grams of sugar being dumped into the Pacific Ocean and all kinds of other lies. That's, that's who Seoul is. And so New Scale just announced that the investors pulled out because they cut out, their lies cut up to them, and the, which we predicted five years ago when they came out and opened their pie holes in the first time. I said, well, that's going to double or triple or quadruple the price you're talking about. Because 90% of the money goes to administration. Because that's what they do. They just steal the money for themselves, right? And because we've covered for so long, this is incontestable. This is unassailable documentation. So New Scale showed up where? Showed up in, in three different countries just in a couple of days since it announced that it flopped miserably. It literally just flopped. It was meant to flop, too. Now they're going to go to other countries and do the same thing. That's what they're up to. That's the very definition of a Ponzi scam, because you'll take the money invested in them from there to pay the investors in the United States. Engineering professor named Fellow of American Nuclear Society. Like, if you're a nuclear engineering professor, you're, you're by proxy than a degenerate. That's what the news cycle shows us. That's not that's not up for debate. That's the reality. We know that now through true tried and tested and proven uh, reports, right? New scale, uh, new scale hopes to send small modular small reactors for cancel project to another customer. And the Portland, those, there's a couple of nuclear companies in Portland, and I've had both of them harass me over the years. And I, like, so unfortunately I had the experience of dealing with them. And make no mistake, these are degenerate scum. These are the lowest forms of life conceivable. And this is one great big scam. And it's stopping you from coming up with real solutions. So it's a very deadly scam. Speaking of scam, the International Atomic Energy Agency. How does it get any worse than that? The ultimate scum. I mean, what the International Atomic Energy is doing is the opposite completely of what they claim they, they do. 
They're saying nothing got out of these buildings, out of four of these buildings. That's two of them. And they're there to monitor it. The, the United Nations Military Industrial Complex, little pet poodle known as the International Atomic Energy Agency, the Director General President of the Democratic Republic of the Congo celebrates cancer care milestone. And so they're going around promoting, radiating the victims that got cancer from their radioactive fallout for the last 80 years. Cancer claims too many lives, says uh, Raphael Grossi. And we're changing that, one radiotherapy center at a time. At the heart of the mission is supporting nations to bolster their cancer care capabilities. Did, was the cancer genocide? Well, what we're talking about is simply a cancer genocide. So you go to the hospital and desperation with your loved ones or yourself or your friends or your children or something. Introduction to a radiation injury, another silent epidemic. Because si if it wasn't silent, Raphael Grossi couldn't do what he was doing. Radiation-induced injuries to the visual pathways. So you will get radiation therapy and it wrecks your entire body. Radiation injuries to the hearts. Radiation-induced kidney injuries, hypoxia from radiation-induced lung injuries, radiation-induced blood spinal cord barrier disruption, central nervous system radiation injuries. That's what radiation treatment in hospital, it destroys, it might take a few years too for it to show up, but it will show up. Radiation-induced bowel injuries, and then laser treatments, severe radiation injuries, lower gastrointestinal intestinal radiation induced kidney injuries ra breast cancer injury litigation central nervous system radiation injury injury to the cranial nerves radiation injury to the head's neck uh, radiation induced brain injury brain narcosis radiation induced regional lung injuries small bowel injuries from radiation, radiation breast injuries, just radiation induced as uh, brain necrosis, normal tissue injury from radiation exposures. There is not a normal, no, radiation induced rectal injuries. So like you go in to get your so-called treatment for one of your cancers and you end up over the next number of months, you get all these radiation illnesses and diseases that will manifest. And this is what we're seeing. And in fact, the studies on radioactive chemotherapy. The studies on radiation chemotherapy The original conclusion, 3% efficiency of radiation chemotherapy treatment and cancer cure. 3%. 3%. So based on facts collected by Worldwide Research, was published in 2004 in the Clinical Oncology, Volume 16, in the pages, under abstract, the overall contribution of curative and adjunct Cryotoxic chemotherapy to a five year survival in adults was 
has made 2.3% in Australia and 2.1% in the United States. So they lose all the hair in their body, kill all the cells in their bodies, and you only got a 23 to 2.1% survival rate. And by the way, your human kidneys are 50 times less efficient than an animal kidney, which is where they do the experiments. And so when they say that they've done the animal experiments and it's safe, it's 50 times more deadly. And that based on this extensive, that, and that study is the second study, there was a, like a follow-up study from a, another institution to repeat the study. Perhaps everyone should contemplate and think of chemotherapy, radioactive chemotherapy, as the alternative route. That we have actually lost ground with our new and improved synthetic man-made chemotherapeutic agents. And 3% in 1985 was horrific. All our research dollars have resulted in a negative 33% further decrease in the benefit. So it, using the radioactive approach was the worst thing you can do to a human. It's literally crimes against humanity to do this stuff. And how many studies do you need before you finally accept the truth? Because I can get it for you. Whatever you need, I'll get it for you if that's what it takes. You want to see a thousand? I'll go get you a thousand. I'll get you whatever you need for you to stop poisoning your loved ones with this fucking shit. Can you see why the nuclear industry hates me? Like, the documentation is so much. Is it numbing for me sometimes it's numbing, but it's so important. But it's not it like it never stops shocking me. Let's put it that way. It never ever for a second stops shocking me. And Raphael Grossi claims too many lives, but we're changing this one radiotherapy center at a time. So here's Raphael Grossi promoting you being assassinating your loved ones by bringing them to the hospital and destroying their quality of life and their future and their loved ones by proxy by using this useless and they they knew it was useless they there's no money in cures there's only money in prolonged suffering Vicksburg students learn about career opportunities at the Grand Gulf nuclear plant. So this is child abuse. To take a child to a nuclear disease factory where the fuel pools are hemorrhaging radiation in the surrounding area all day, every day, that's despicable. It's absolutely, unequivocally despicable. And nuclear plants do it all the time. They're the worst ones. Entergy hosted more than 100 students at the Grand Gulf National Nuclear Station for the Department of Labor's 9th Annual Apprenticeship Week on Wednesday. That's child abuse to bring students to a nuclear disease factory. Nuclear Decommission Authority introduces free period products. Free, get it? Free period products? For females, right? Nuclear Decommission Authority, which hasn't decommissioned a single thing in the United Kingdom. And they're always the most gobbledyish personalities we've run across with this lot. I mean, the, the British and the Australians, nuclear industry, the people in it, are despicable. Like, they must go out and look for the worst humans they can find with an education and then hire them. <sighs> The Nuclear Decommission Authority, which has never done nothing on his steal everybody's money in the United Kingdom, has introduced complementary period products in Crumbia, which is a nuclear wasteland, a cellar field. Had a nuclear meltdown in 1957 that's still hemorrhaging 8 million liters a day into the Atlantic Ocean. It's catastrophic to all of those communities where that evaporates out and into them. A, a safe place for staff so they can have their periods. 
right? Like the, like the industry is so disconnected from any concept of reality. Uh, I don't, I can't comprehend how they manage to tie their own shoes every day. It blows me away. They don't run over a dozen people on the way to work each day. I can't comprehend that they can even use a fork and a knife because they have that much hatred for the rest of us. Bruce Power, which is Canada, so I apologize right away because Canada was captured by the nuclear industry in the 40s and 50s through the Manhattan Projects. Bruce Power opened Bruce C. Project Office and Community Hub Bruce Power. So first off, this is the mayors and the civil employees in the community all dare to celebrate all the freebies. Like, what well, Bruce Power is going to bring the fuel up there to store it. That's what they're planning on doing, right? And everything has to be vented the whole way there. And when it gets there, they have to repackage it. And where they're going to put it is on farmland underneath it, in deep so-called deep geological repository. At the surface, they're going to open everything up. All that is going to go into the local community. <clears throat> and all of their loved ones are going to suffer debilitating illnesses and diseases and autoimmune deficiencies and injuries. But they don't care about that. They don't think about that. They're not capable of understanding that. And Bruce Power ain't going to tell it to them. But they're all there to sign away their own future and their loved one's future and their future health, too, at the same time. And they're going to revel in it. And the mayor, Carboneer, is pleased that the new office will offer residents a chance to learn more about the nuclear disease factory that they're going to put in their back gardens. Is there any hemorrhaging radiation? Like the whole, the whole story, every facet of it is predicated upon deceit and dishonesty. And every part of nuclear, it couldn't exist with any honesty whatsoever. South Australia is a bargarla and my, my apologies if I butchered their name, traditional owners, the native owners of, of Kimba, where, which is major farmland, of course, where they're going to build a deep geological repository for Australia, was finally scuttled thanks to the natives who were excluded from the original referendum and owns the actual land themselves, were excluded from having a say. Finally won in court after all these years. And what they were going to bury in the ground was what they call medical radiation, left over from procedures where they murdered your loved ones. It's still so radioactive that you need to put it in the deep underground. And a lot of that is, you know, like the, the hospital patients, from the victims, I should call them, from the radiation slaughter, are put in special rooms after they're irradiated. Because the room is loaded with lead. It's a, what they call a million dollar rooms. And that's why you don't radiate the people out in the hallway. Because the victims are so radiated. And that their, their urine and their stooge, their excrements, are brought to a nuclear waste site, which they were hoping was a deep geological repository in Kimba. Thank goodness was scuttled. Because why, why are you going to build it in prime farmland? Because everything is packaged at the surface and the food moves the radiation out of the air area regularly, right? And so hats off to the natives who stood tall and lasted the distance and finally won against this crimes against humanity known as the nuclear industry. West Valley Nuclear power plant testing emergency alert systems on Friday. They got 70 sirens, I believe, in a 10-mile radius. Yeah, 70 sirens will go blasting every dog, every bird, every animal. And 10 miles will be just get... You got 70 sirens screaming at you. Now, the sirens were put there because of Three Mile Island, because they covered up 2 million people getting irradiated. And so one of the concessions they had to make was to put sirens around all other nuclear power plants in, or all nuclear power plants in the country after Three Mile Island. And that the, the, the governor of Three Mile Island, who was only 70 days into the job, later bragged how he didn't evacuate people because he didn't want to panic. 
But that's why you got all these sirens so you can panic. Because you can't see it or smell it or perceive it or hear it or feel it or taste it. And so therefore, you need to evacuate when there's a release. Because if you're there, you're going to get um, devastating inhalation and consumption and contamination. And you can never get rid of it. And on top of that, they're going to come after your cell phones too. Huh? You don't have these, you don't put... 70 sirens around a coal plant. You don't put 70 sirens around a gas plant. You don't put 70 sirens around an oil plant. You put 70 sirens around nuclear plants only. And the emissions from gas, oil, and coal don't make plumes that covers the planet. The only thing that does that is the nuclear, in it, nuclear emissions. And all nuclear power plants' fuel pools are still splitting the atoms, and they no, have no containment. And because you can't perceive it or smell it or hear it or feel it or touch it, they're confident you'll never work it out. And they're probably right. Removing cesium, solutions to a chemically complex problem. And so Buddy's been working at this for 25 or 30 years. So the time at Hanford was 56 million gallons in tanks of seriously radioactive sludge, right? And that they're going, the only thing they need extract they're claiming is cesium. And that should make you angry because it's a complete dishonest thing to say. Your biggest byproduct of the radiated fuel rods is curium isotopes. And curium isotopes need lead shielding 20 times thicker than you do for plutonium. I did, did not give me 10 views on my video after two hours because I'm wrong. So think about this. You can put 200 million atoms on the head of a needle. You can't see it. 200 million. So say 100,000 of them are cesium. How are you going to extrapolate 100,000 out of the 200 million atoms on the head of a needle that you can't see and then store it on top of that? How does that actually work? Because it doesn't. It can't be done. But see, that's, that's the beauty of brainwashing, and that's the beauty of no accountability. There's no incentive not to be evil, so they come up with stuff like this. Now, Hanford wasn't just 56 million gallons. In the 40s and 50s, they dumped 450 billion gallons directly into the soil. 450 billion gallons, not 56 million, but 450 billion. So 450 billion gallons is equal to 1,422,323 of those 56 tanks that they're talking about. 56 million gallons is in 177 tanks, I believe. I can't remember off the top of my head. I get lost in numbers so sometimes. So... They dumped 1.4 million tanks into the soil, but they got around 177 tanks on site that they're trying to turn uh, turn into glass, basically, to store it for a million years. But you can't if you store it in steel this thick, it's still going to break it down. So how is glass any different? It's not. Right? They, they dumped 1.4 million tanks into you know, 300,000 gallon tanks into the soil, 450 million gallons, 450 billion gallons. So 450 billion gallons if you uh, take a thousand liters that, and so that would be like a, a one ton a bag of waste. So, if you took a six foot wide aquarium, you went 518 feet tall, and you wrapped it around the planet and then some again, that's 450 billion gallons. So, 450 billion gallons can make a radioactive wall six feet wide, 518 feet tall, wrapped around the entire planet and then some again. But the Fisher story is all their nuclear waste can fit in the swimming pool, right? But China has the same kind of dumping issues back then. India, Pakistan had the same thing. Canada, Russia, everybody was doing the same thing. 
We destroyed the future of humanity with this perpetual disease machine known as nuclear. This was the worst thing you can do to a planet was put nuclear power plants on it. Will the real environmentalists please stand up? Will the real journalists please hold all the other journalists accountable? As clean energy solutions cannot meet our current nor future needs, dirty energy will predominate and climate change will continue to wreak havoc on the planet, disproportionately on the low income and vulnerable people. Disproportionately on the low income and vulnerable people. The dirtiest thing on the planet is nuclear fallout. It's two billion times more toxic than industrial poison. And the problem with it is the plumes covers the entire planet in an, a couple of weeks to a month. And so everything is now gas, oil, and coal emissions don't have these attributes. Nuclear is the only one with that attributes. And you got this invisible plume covering an entire planet, pulsing energy almost at the speed of light every second. It destroys the ecosystem in increments over decades. How Britain became America's stooge. Well, it still is. As Britain lost the ability to maintain its empire, the U.S. took on the role of managing the global order. In someone else's empire, Tom Stevenson shows how American dominance, aided and abetted by Britain, has caused untold suffering across the world. Well, that's an understatement, isn't it? Japan's urged the lifting of a seafood ban by China and Russia at the World Trade Organization Center, which is UN. Everything that's setting the rules for you and your country is not your country, it's you in. And or one of their sub which is one of their subsidy companies, right? IAEA, Unsclear, ERPA, the ICRP, UNICEF, the World Trade Organization, the World Monetary Fund, the world they got so many of these organizations you can't possibly keep up with it. Japan urged the lifting of seafood band. So so the seafood ban is because allegedly on August the 24, 2023, Japan started dumping for the first time uh, what they call contaminated or treated water from the site. Nothing got off the site until this year is what the official story says. Now they picked up 30 million one tons of bags of 30 million one ton bags of radiation. And that they banned the food from 14 prefectures for a decade by 55 countries. So to suggest nothing got out is ludicrous in every sense of that word. But they're so insane, they're growing food right alongside of one-ton bags of radiation in a nuclear wasteland. In addition to raising questions on the import restrictions of meetings regarding World Trade Organization rules, Japan may also decide to file a complaint to the global trade body as Tokyo viewed the import restrictions introduced after the release of the treated radioactive water from the disaster hit Fukushima nuclear disease factory as lacking scientific ground. So claiming there was no radiation, same as South Korea done, I showed you earlier. Japan may also decide to file a complaint to the global trade body, the World Trade Organization, which they've done to South Korea originally about five years ago. So Korea didn't want to take food from the nuclear wasteland. So they filed in one uh, a decision with the World Trade Organization that So Korea had to take the food from the nuclear wasteland. So So Korea appealed it. Because that administration was fairly, you know, honest compared to the current degenerate one they have there, the Yoon administration. So they're saying that there's no scientific evidence to ban the food from the nuclear, from the water off the coastline. This, the idea is to promote the tritium story, see? So what they're saying, in essence, is that that never happened. There is no meltdowns. There was no 30 million one tons of bags of radiation. There was no fallout. There, there was no loss. That nothing got off the site, only 
And what it did was equal to three grams of sugar. And it's corruption on a level that's not tenable for the rest of the species in humanity's future. So far, no ab abnormal levels of tritium, of tritium, have been detected. No abnormal levels of tritium have been detected. I can barely contain my contempt for these subhuman species that we're talking about today. This, this nuclear industry, hang on. U.S. states hit with extremely large peaks of Fukushima radioactive material, significant amount of plutonium, not tritium, but plutonium, measured globally and blanketed it the entire northern hemisphere. Radiation, this was a French study of cesium-137, spiked a million to 10 million times. Now, this model that you're looking at is only based on um, September or March the 18th, I think. Yeah, March the 18th. So it's based on seven days after the tsunami and two days or three days after, or two days after the last reactor blew up. So that plume doesn't do it just justification. But there, they do have another plume model that, they, that came out later on the same one, and it's this one right here. And this one is based on 16 days of radioactive fallout. So when this uh, model stops, this is France's model of the cesium-137 at a million to 10 million becquerels per cubic meter of air flow, showing radiation covering the entire planet. And so when I talk about global warming, you have an invisible plume covering the planet. So think of a snowstorm where the snow never melts. After 20 days, the whole planet is covered, and you can see snow, right? So it never melts, it never goes away, and it never stops snowing. Now, now don't call it snow no more, but call it radiation, and that's what 80 years of nuclear. But Fukushima was a, a pulse event where you lost multiple, you lost multiple reactors and decades of reactor cores at the top of the buildings. Like, we've never seen a single building with these attributes, and now we have four at the one time, and then, because the average person don't understand the nuclear industry, everybody's been directed to Chernobyl as the world's worst nuclear disaster, which is ludicrous to suggest. And the International Atomic Energy Agency, a.k.a. the IAEA, Released a report in July that the water discharge aligned with global safety standards would have an eligible impact on people and the environment. So here was the International Atomic Energy Agency report coming out saying there is no meltdown. There is no releases. There was no, this was a non-event. That nothing actually happened. That's, and so that's their consensus now. But you know and I both know that that's simply not true. And so that, so that means the International Atomic Energy Agency will not hesitate to destroy everybody's future on the drop of a hat again. They won't hesitate, and they're actually trying to poison you and your loved ones in the hospital. Where do you draw the line is a question that you should ask yourself. Sean reaches supply agreement with Nucleus Radio Pharma. So again... You're talking about poisoning people with anthropogenic man-made radiation and that nobody and nothing on the planet has an immune system triggered to defend against anthropogenic man-made radiation because it's not part of the solar system. It's not created by the sun. You have no defense against it. And so the most vulnerable species have zero defense, particularly the children too and the little species, the babies. So you slowly start sterilizing all the species, humans included, <clears throat> and but uh, a lot of the insects might have many generations each year, so it shows up quite quickly and then they disappear. And when you see a lot of insects of the one species, the, the first question you need to ask yourself is where the predators are to, because you would normally never see a lot of one species. They're usually the feeder species, and they will they're kept in check by the many species that eats them, right? So like mosquitoes, you got everything from dragonflies to frogs to fish to birds to 
Many, many species will eat them, right? And so clinical trials. So they're going to get all these isotopes for therapies, but these therapies are strictly in clinical trials. So after 100 years of using radiation, they still haven't come up with radi they still haven't developed a radiation that works. But one thing they learned was every one of them destroys your quality of life right away and then you. And so imagine your neighbor or your child, and every time your child left the house, they got hit by a car. Every time. Not just once in a while, but every time that they went out, they got hit by a car, they, you took care of them, you nursed them back to health, and they went out, and sure enough, within seconds, they got ran over by a car again. And would you spend your whole life doing that, or would you start taking care of the child? You would get arrested eventually anyway, wouldn't you, right? Well, the International Atomic Energy Agency should be charged with crimes against humanity and should be held accountable. And that if you look at their propaganda over their entire legacy, it's impossible not to win a case. Like they've convicted themselves, but they also control the system. It's so corrupt, they thought about that, and so they put themselves in key positions to make sure they can't be held accountable. And that your Congress, your parliaments, don't have the authority to make it illegal to poison you with radiation. Only the Nuclear Regulatory Commission in your country has that authority to make it illegal to poison you with radiation. But your government has the authority to make it illegal to poison you with thousands and thousands of chemicals, but they can't make it illegal for radiation. That's the only one they don't have any control over. Why is that? Why is that, you think? Because it's guaranteed to make you sick, because it's guaranteed to destroy your quality of life and ultimately your life. And so they're only investigating, they're taking radiation, going to put it into your loved ones for clinical trials and see if it works, like they've been doing to millions and millions and millions of people each year for years and years and years. It's one, one like, if you go get radiation therapy, that's considered experimental therapy. And it's not therapy, it's got nothing to do with therapy. <laughs> the Philippines, United States, and Nuclear Energy Corporation. They just had a 7.2 magnitude earthquake there, and they're talking about putting a nuclear power plant in one of the most earthquake intensive and typhoon intensive and tsunami intensive places on the entire planet. In desperation to make it look like nuclear has some redeeming qualities. Nuclear is wiping out all of our species. Is radiation for nuclear stress test harmful? Involves injecting a small amount of radioactive material into the bloodstream. Radiation stress. Well, we take a load of this. The material emits gamma ray can be detected by special cameras. An amount of radiation received during the test is comparable to that of a routine chest x-ray. No, no. A chest x-ray, you turn it on, then you turn it off. This is your ejecting it into your body. This is completely different. Inv involves injecting a small amount of radio. Well, how much is a small amount, though? It's not, not just an x-ray. It's six to nine millisieverts. These are physical atoms we're talking about, not millisieverts. You don't inject millisieverts in anybody. You inject physical atoms. Calling it millisieverts is completely dishonest terminology. It's completely, it has nothing to do with what you're doing. It's complete wrong. It's like you're going in, to, you got to go in for surgery to get your appendix out. And the doctor says, well, we're going to put appendix in. And you say, like, no, you're taking it out, right? No, no, we're going to put appendix in. And you say, no, you're going to take it out. Like, don't argue with me, I'm the doctor. 
And we're going to put an appendix in. Yeah, but I'm sick because my appendix has to come out, right? Yes, we're going to take your appendix and put it in you. Because it doesn't make any sense. That's what they're saying there. Six, when they say millisievers, like it doesn't make sense. Millisievers is like if I had radiation uh, five feet away from me and it was pulsing energy and hitting me, that's that's why you measure millisievers. When I inject it into you, that's f I can't inject it into you like energy. I have to inject the physical atoms into you. And that's a serious friggin' dose. The average annual background radiation exposure, two to three millisievers. But natural, natural and anthropogenic man-made are two completely different emissions. You, you, and first off, the emissions that we get are, everybody's already acclimated to it through genetic superior selection. It's homeostasis, it's harmless, it's innocuous, it's benign. The six to nine millisieverts is an assault. That's an assault. You've been assaulted. You're now under siege. Your body is under siege. Your body now has to attack that for the rest of your life. The average radiation dose approximately six to nine millisieverts. To put it in the perspective, the average annual background radiation exposure is two to three millisieverts. But what are you talking about? These are completely different things. You can't equate like the background natural stuff from radon and, and, and rocks and everything else, granted, that's, yeah, you, you measure that in millisieverts because it's not physical atoms. And it's not harmful. This is the stuff that, this is the human experience. We're already acclimated to it. Everything on the planet is. But then 6.9 millisieverts, which is actual physical becquels, and should be never measured in millisieverts, <coughs> Radiation exposure does a nuclear stress test. Generally safe, generally, and well tolerated. Look, if a single atom, like 200 million atoms in the head of a needle, but I can't see it. If I take one of them, put it in your body, your body attacks it for the rest of your life, white blood cells, and 10, 20, 30 years down the road, it'll build a sarcophagus around it. That's called a tumor, by the way. Your body attacks it every second for the rest of your life with white blood cells because it's a foreign, it's like having a foreign piece of metal in your body. Your body attacks it relentlessly to deal with it. And because you don't have any way of fixing it, it's not like a cut on your finger where the white blood cells will attack it and six or seven days later there's no cut. It fixed it, right? It can't fix the radiation, so it attacks it all day, every day. So you have less oxygen because you have less red blood cells because you're producing so much white blood cells for the rest of your life. You have less red blood cells, which carry oxygen and nutrition throughout your body. So there's a cause and effect. It's extremely obvious and well documented. And suggest as well tolerate it. Just because you tol just because you can tolerate it doesn't mean that down the road that there won't be adverse side effects from it. Because eventually you're compromising your immune system will make you more susceptible to pathogens pathogens and viruses. It's not generally safe. No, there's no amount that is considered safe because your body attacks with white blood cells for the rest of your life. However, in rare cases, some of you may experience minor sun effects. Yeah, but just because it doesn't show up right away don't mean it's not going to show up because it most certainly, if you're ejecting it into your body, it's going to show up at some point. Allergic reactions to the radioactive material. And are there any alternatives? There is. Is nuclear medicine the same as radiation? Again, if it's anthropogenic man-made, then it's got nothing to do with natural. And so to, to conflate them the way they've done and continue to do is completely dishonest. Rate of pharmaceuticals are not, man, are not natural. They're man-made. They're made from elements that don't exist in the solar system that are considered 100% man-made. They're administered to patients either orally, intravenously, or through inhalations. Well, this is man-made. This has the same attributes as the previous story. Allowing medical professionals to observe the functions of the organs and tissues within the body. Yeah, it's a neat trick. But just because you can do it don't mean it's safe. Just because you can do it, that doesn't mean that it's safe. 
Refer to the use of high energy particles, waves like x rays and gamma rays to diagnose and treat diseases. You can't treat diseases with anthropogenic man made radiation. It simply doesn't work. Understand the duration of nuclear medicine in the body. So, once you go into your body, you can sequester in the muscles, the organs, and the bones. You've got no control of it. Your bodies don't just naturally expel it. Because it's electrically charged, it'll, it'll bind with your cells. In the realm of medical diagnosis treatment, nuclear medicine plays a crucial role. It involves the use... No, it doesn't play... No, it's an artificial crucial role. And that's one of the things we've been covering for a long time, was how this industry... Like, if you go back to the, to the legacy of nuclear... Every time they found an isotope, they tried to use it to cure something in a human. But it doesn't work that way. So, for instance, uh, there's a movie out there that's actually fairly accurate, and one of the very few is called Radium Girls. And they poison all these poor children by having them ingest radiation on purpose. But if you look at the quackery, nuclear quackery of... Uh, medicine, where back in the day they had uh, radium suppositories, where you put radium up your bum in a container. And ultimately that would destroy your life, right? And then they had radium makeup. They had radium lipstick. They had uh, radium soaps and radium hand cleaners where you would wash your hands each day with this radium. Of course, you touch your face, you're, you're cooking, you're picking up your food, you're cutting it, you're picking up bread and chewing on it. And you're ingesting all this radiation on top of that. But anything you put on your hands, on your body, is it goes right through your skin right away and ends up in your bloodstream, circulates through your body. And all of these eventually came off the market, but not before they destroyed endless, endless, endless amounts of people. And and there's so many there's so many of these things that they had done with radiation and put it into people's homes. Like there there was this one radium um, polish or radi radium cleaner so you would polish your furniture you polish your tables you would polish your kitchen sinks and all the door handles and this is what they would suggest to you car handles and they polish you know your floor and, and and so these houses were unbelievably contaminated and they destroy all the people that visited them too on top of that what an insidious industry that and there's so many of these examples it's stunning it's just stunning and treat various conditions however a common question that arises is how long it takes for these radioactive substances to leave the bodies once they serve their purpose again because there's so many different isotopes they'll give you the short lived ones and then ignore the long lived ones right what is planar imaging in nuclear medicine? That's an artificial generated girl. And most people will see that. If you put a picture of a real girl and that girl there, most people will say she's the real one. Gamma cameras, disease factors. And so when you get an x-ray or... What they do is they'll they would put this um, X X ray belt on your groin or something or in your pelvis to stop you from getting X rays down there. Right, that, that's what they say. But what the X rays machines do is they calibrate themselves, and so now you get a massive dose because it's got to get through this X ray apron that they got onto you. And so there's a directive out there to stop using these things. And in hospital, it's notorious to take huge doses of radiation and put it in the wrong place, inject it right directly into your veins, your loved one's veins, and kill them. And we covered so many of them stories, it's just heartbreaking. And so, like, the x-rays is one of the worst ways to get a massive dose is to use those aprons. Kashida and Z... Oh, there's a little... Agitated. Prime Minister Kishida in Japan and Chinese President Xi 
Agree to seek ways to end Fukushima wastewater spat. Spat. Wastewater spat. Again, Fukushima actually melted down, despite what they're telling you. It actually melted down. And that this model was based on six years, but it's only based on small releases, not based on the actual multiple nuclear meltdowns that I show you on a regular basis. Right? It's not based on the inventories from a single reactor and the whole ocean is radioactive. And Kushida, the, the prime ministers of most country, and presidents of most country, are, are merely the lapdog, the, they're just puppets. And the puppet masters, you very rarely see them that are controlling the puppets. And their job is to go out and regurgitate whatever the med they want the media to regurgitate. So Associate Press, They'll put out a press release to Associate Press. And Associate Press will put this story, say it's three paragraphs, and there's the name of the author, and there's a picture. Well, that name, that author, those three paragraphs, and that picture will automatically get aggregated by what known as spider bots on 1,600 other medias instantly, all at the same time. 1,600 media... We'll come up with the same picture, the same three paragraphs, but the same author at the same time. And nobody will come out and say, wait a second, you know, that's not actually true. So everybody has the exact same conversation. And uh, associate press and writers both will do that exact thing. And it's really insidious how they got away with it. And so they're claiming the first meeting in a year. Now, the idea was Taiwan, South Korea. So South Korea, Taiwan, China, and Japan are working together to promote the tritium story. Right? Their, their job is to pretend that nothing got out of Fukushima. Just, and this is what they're doing. And they look, you know, over... They'll keep the fight going for a year, get all this controversy, get everybody's attention, and then they'll kiss and make up and say, okay, well, we come to a conclusion that it's actually safe. But the reality of it is, the plumes covered the planet. That top left-hand corner up there was 20 days. The reactors actually melted down. And every academic on the planet knew that when he seen that. And the reactor's gone, the fuel pools are gone. Every academic worldwide knew that right away. And that 15, 14 prefectures, the food was banned by 55 countries for over a decade. And they picked up 30 million one-ton bags and are so disconnected, they're growing food right alongside of tens of thousands of one-ton bags of radiation. None of this was conceivable pre-Fukushima, but became the new norm and a very dangerous one at that. And... Ultimately, you're being poisoned. All nuclear power plants worldwide, except for a handful, are surrounded by farms as far as you can see. And so talking about seafood, when you should be talking about all the food, that's the distraction, see? So no, no, we're, we're no, the seafood. No, no, no. You picked up 30 million one-ton bags. The food was banned by 55 countries for a decade, it, it doesn't go away in a decade or 10,000 decades. But they, they talk about seafood, they come to terms, now they got agreement. But the agreement should be to ban food from all prefectures permanently f to long past the human experience. <clears throat> Remarks at Harvard Law School program, International Financial System. Chiba government seeks to lift restrictions on agricultural and fishery products in Taiwan. And Taiwan's another scumbag, right? Chiba government seeks to lift restrictions on agricultural fishery products. Agricultural and fisheries. Governor of Japan Chiba Prefecture is asking Taiwan to adjust its import restrictions on food products from Chiba as he leads a delegation to Taiwan. He's asking a single person to remove the restrictions. Do you get it? 
A single person has the ability to poison everybody in the country. And this is what we see happening over and over and over. So you just got to buy off one person. And he'll kick back to the rest of them in this country that he's supposed to. But you just got to pay off one person to poison everybody else. He says Japan and Taiwan helped each other during the pandemic, the scamdemic, and removed the total ban of food products from five prefectures near Fukushima this year has been helpful for Chiba, which is right by Tokyo. She's 240 kilometers away from Fukushima, for goodness sakes. You know what the food was banned there? Well, they should have banned food from Japan. Japan should be abandoned. When 55 countries banned the food from half the country, you should abandon the country. It's airborne and it, the damage is long done. And it ain't never going to go away. It's nuclear. Chiba, which is right next, 20 kilometers away from Tokyo. And the food is banned there. And they want, Taiwan wants to ban on their agricultural products. Or Japan wants to ban on their agricultural products, which was banned in 10 prefectures. Now it's only banned in five, but should have been banned permanently in at least 14. And that... Uh, if I was in charge, I would have banned food from the country, period. And, and they're doing, they're poisoning you on purpose. And they get great pleasure from it. Japan tourists now have spite, and so everybody's being poisoned that goes there. Here's what to do about radiation exposure on airplanes. airplanes. And... Did you know that bananas are the most radioactive food we can eat? Bananas. <clears throat> like only a low life would use bananas in this conversation. That's the daily cash. You know who that is, right? That's that scumbag himself. The degenerate scumbag. Do you use the word bananas? You should never forgive anybody who uses the comparison, the dishonest comparison of bananas and conflates it with anthropogenic man-made radiation. These are, uh, and the lies are extraordinary in that story, and I'm not going to torture you or myself trying to get through it. But 250 Rohingya refugees in Indonesia were sent back to sea in an old decrepit ship. Imagine being sent back to sea in an old ship like this that doesn't even have its own power. And there's 250 people in this little boat. <clears throat> you can put them on a plane and send them back to wherever they came from. You can't send them to the ocean in an overcrowded wooden boat. A plane that detects nuclear explosions flies over the Baltic Sea. <clears throat> so they're claiming they're looking for Russian fallout from Russian nuclear tests. But these really are the lowest forms of life that I come across or the people that has that particular job. Because it's hard to comprehend for, I guess, for everybody. But the whole ecosystem has been wrecked by perpetual massive radioactive fallout from Japan. Japan's radioactive fallout is extraordinary. It dwarfs all nuclear accidents worldwide combined. And so the nuclear industry is the most cowardly, despicable, scumbag industry imaginable. It's an industry of perpetual scumbags, perpetual degenerates. These are the most degenerate. It's truly one of the worst industries conceivable. <clears throat> and Raphael Grossi, what he's doing and reveling in, why we cannot trust the International Atomic Energy Agency. You can't trust the International Atomic Energy Agency. I mean, my goodness, 
they're claiming, and they're the ones who's, who's uh, who are orchestrating the 2.2 grams of tritium fable, claiming nothing got out of this, only 2.2 grams of tritium, and it's in a thousand tanks. And they're calling him, he thinks he's a human. <clears throat> they're not lying because it's harmless. Right? They're not lying because it's harmless. They're lying because that's who they are. That's why they got the job. Is They have no conscience. Telling a lie is easy for them. And that's all they can do in that job. There's only one thing he does in that job is tell the lies. That's Raphael's grocery's job is to tell you lies. So I'm not sure if I'll be back tomorrow night. I will be shooting video tomorrow on the trail and probably will shoot like 30. I, well, my camera can only shoot 30 minutes at a time. I still got to figure a way to charge the battery while I'm out there on the trail tomorrow. So I'm going to the boat on the, on the trailers and look at about 100 kilometers and drop it and then take off in the central interior. And I'm going to check. There's close to 100 lakes I can check. I'm not sure if we'll make it through all of them, but uh, I'm going to give it my best shot and see if we can find any birds, in particular seabirds on the interior. And we know the lakes are empty because we've been doing this for quite a few years on the East Coast now. And we have uh, six years of going to Alaska for four months on the, the five months at a time on the ocean. But uh, before the snow shows up down here, now, my health is still not returned, but I'm good enough. And I got a friend going to bring deer quad out there, too. So I got a backup to get back with, right? And go out there and look, spend four or five hours, see if we can find any birds in the ponds. And so I'll be shooting videos, taking pictures, I would imagine. Uh, but it's, uh, I'll have the gimbal, the big gimbal, the big camera with me. So it should be good footage. And we'll do a bird count tomorrow. And we like to raise... 50 60 70 dollars to cover expenses tonight um for the fuel to get there the fuel to come back and then the fuel for the quads and i can pack my own lunch right i'm not worried about that that would be nice because i'm gonna go through any resources i got left to pull this off tomorrow but if we don't take advantage of it now we might not get another opportunity till the spring and so i'm hoping the day after to put the boat in the water because it looks like the winds are coming down and we might get another day out on the ocean here where we can scour the coastlines and look for any migratory birds or any kind of uh, signs of life which would be a big win if we can pull that off but we'll definitely but it looks like we're going to pull off tomorrow morning <laughs> and so they censored my video to the point where uh, I only had four views, or Thursday, that's Thursday, had 25 views after two hours. And then last night video on Israel had four views. I had eight thumbs up. There's like 13 people on the video at one point, which is still nothing. <coughs> Incredible censorship as it is for the numbers. But they only let me have four views, and on Thursday night I only had 25 views. We had over 30 people on the show. I only had 25 views after two hours. And so they hate my guts. That's, they just hate my guts. And I'm actually a good person. I'm not a bad person like them. I'm actually a good person. Something they can never call themselves. Something their children can never call them. And if they do, they should hang their heads in shame because they know they're not good people. They're horrible people. And the people that censor me, can you imagine what kind of pathetic person you got to be to censor someone like me? It boggles my mind. It boggles my mind. Anyway, folks, if you can donate 10, 20, 30 bucks, please do it. Links are in the very bottom description. There's only two ways to donate. One at my site, through any credit card, literally, will donate. And PayPal. I'm hoping to raise 50 or 60 or 70. I'll be
be happy with anything. But I'm going anyway, so. Hope for everybody. Hopefully I'll see you tomorrow night. <coughs> Hopefully I see you tomorrow night. I'll be posting a video with her. Let's hope you're not too tired. I can probably get in a short video even if I am tired. Let's see. Hope for everybody. Have a great night. I'll see everybody. Let me make sure. Take care.